I also do know that there are some people who really don't understand what's, what's, what, what's it about. He died. Uh-huh. Okay, so he rose. Guinness Book of Record was achieved. In it? Oh, well, yeah. Are you agreeing with me? There are some people who still do not know the reason that we are crazy regarding the death and his resurrection. You know, some person somewhere, I'm sure, will in his mind reason that, okay, yes, so he now died and he rose again. What you were Guinness Book of Record? Kilotuku and all of that. But there is so much gain. There is so much life, you know, that uh, uh, we have come to get by the reason of his dying, you know, by the power inherent in the blood that he shed. It was last week, was it last week that we watched, um, that we watched whatever it was, I don't know which clips, where they got it from. It was Passion of the Christ. And so we saw that cl the clip and the people like sat around as they were, as they were, what would I say? That time they got the second one that had tongues and all. And as they went with it on his back, boom, and the sound effect helped, you know? They went with it on his back and then they pulled it. I saw how people cringed. You know, I saw how some people were shedding tears. I'm not telling lies here. I, I saw someone who was wiping their face and all. And that's just, you know, that was not drama. They just were able to weep together, binti by, of the very real thing. His death is, was real. The resurrection, very real. The blood he shed went very deep. All right? So today, in celebrating um, that we have a God who didn't just die and make Guinness Book of Record, would like to set straight the things that his shedding, the shedding of his blood brought onto yourself and myself. We need to know. We need to know. Sometimes all of these knowings help in the building up of our faith. Faith, the Bible says, comes by hearing. And hearing is by the word of God. Let's read from um, Hebrews chapter 9. Verse 28, um, Brother Gottstein, the Sunday before today, talked about, you know, uh, how that prior to, prior to the death of Jesus Christ, uh, um, so you had to shed blood, you know, again and again and again, right? The sacrifices have to always be done because it was never enough. It was never enough. It was not a once and for all time thing. But when Jesus Christ came and died... It was once and for all. Your sins, the remission of your sin by the blood of Jesus Christ has happened once and for all. You know, like um, subscriptions in the telecoms, um, airtime subscription, data plan subscriptions. Uh, you subscri sometimes you subscribe once a month. Some subscribe once a week. Some people are on a plan that for as long as you remain on that network, it is consistent that you will always be a veiled service. That, 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 that's the kind we're talking about right now. That's what the blood of Jesus did. And so Christ was offered how many times? Hello? How many times? He was offered to once to bear the sins of many. He was offered how many times to bear the sins of many? It was just once. He needed and he did it only once. Only once. Only once. Are you imagining the power in the blood? Uh, 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 that he shared ones way ahead of your four, four, four parents. The same blood speaks yet for you, even up till now. So beyond making the uh, uh, Guinness Book of Records, his blood atoned for our sins, and it was done only once. You don't need any extra sacrifices to be made. And so we wonder at the people who will go by the corners of the streets to Baba, 
who will go by the corners of the street to Ebami Yewo. And then they will list for them how they needed to bring, uh, tell me now, black cock and white horse and green goat and alligator pepper, how that they are wallowing in ignorance and foolishness, something that Christ paid for only once. I need you to know and be sure of this thing now that it was paid for. His shedding of blood paid and atoned for everything only once. Only once. Only once. Hallelujah. You're not glad he did it. You're not glad he did it. I, I want to hear back from you if you're glad he died and, and paid the price for you only once. What more did that do? Isaiah 53 verse 3. It was all encompassing. His shedding of blood, he, he touched every area possible. He was wounded. I, I'd like that you begin to picture the clips we saw in the Passion of Christ here. How was he wounded? And for what was he wounded? I don't know what version this is. Can we start back from the beginning? He is despised and rejected. No, okay. Verse 53, verse 3. Is that 53, verse 3? He is despised and rejected. I'm not sure I got what I wanted. 53, verse... Okay, let's read from 3 to 5. Yes. Uh, he is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrow. Verse 5. But he was wounded for our... Hold on. He was wounded for our... He was wounded for our... And he was bruised for our... You're not sure what you're reading. I didn't write the Bible. The gain of his blood. What did this his blood do? What's the hula baloo about he dying and he, he, him dying and rising? So he rose. Yeah. A feat no man could do. He was the first. Yeah. So what else? The power inherent in the sacrifice is the joy that we have here today. And he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon him and by his stripes. By his stripes, we are healed. So we are delivered from sin and Satan. Unimaginable sin, a hundred years to come. Unimaginable in 20 years to come. He already got wounded for it. He got bruised for it. Sicknesses and diseases. We got healed by those many whips that entered into his body. And put stripes and marks on him. Infirmities, sicknesses, diseases, whatsoever they be called, cannot hold you down any longer. That was the power in the blood shed for you. So it's not Guinness Book of Record that he died and he rose again. He did extra. He did the unimaginable. And it is all encompassing. So no one tells you you are held bound under cause and sin and Satan. No one tells you you are held bound under diseases and infirmities. Because all those were paid for. Hallelujah. 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 I don't know how many of you go about... In condemnation all of the time. I'm thinking it's because you do not know what happened on the cross. You go about in condemnation all of the time. You try to bear your wrongdoings and your sins again. You carry on the weight and the after effects. And you live and you go around it. Or they try to make you be it. Something that someone else who knew no sin, you know, 
took on himself and then he died and he arose and you're going on carrying guilt that's not yours a guilt that's been wiped off wrongdoing that is not in record anywhere against you again So you were forgiven already. Um, let's read Romans chapter 5 and verse 9. Much more than we have been justified by his blood. There's justification for yourself and myself. We have been what? I am justified by the blood of the, the Lamb. I'm justified by the shed blood of Christ. I have no business carrying the weight of, of, of a wrongdoing. I, I have no business, you know, being pressed down by, 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 by an account that is not in record any longer in heaven. I have been justified by the shed blood of Christ. Say to someone again, I am justified. And by this very essence of his dying, we gain favor. All round favor. All round favor, favor, unmerited favor for our helplessness. So we have been favored. So his dying and his rising, you know, marked us as a favored people. It singles us out as a favored people. Hallelujah. Um, let's read Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. Then the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. Okay, so we have, um, we have been favored of the Lord. We have power to overcome the enemy. He has no power to hold us down any longer. Revelations chapter 12, verse 11. Let's read Revelations 12, 11. And we overcame. That's in the past tense. You know? We overcame how? No, no, no. How did we overcome? Everybody is not with me. How did we overcome? And then... Okay, so I'm going to tie the two together. How did we overcome? We overcame. We overcame. We overcame. We overcame already by the blood of the Lamb. And by how? The word of our testimony, affirming the work already completed. Already completed. That's how we overcame. We overcame struggles already. We overcame sicknesses already. We overcame infirmities and diseases already. We overcame poverty already. We overcame every mountain that can stand already. The Bible says that there is no weapon formed against you that will prosper. What did it say? Every tongue that will try to rise against you in judgment. What did it say you will do? Thou shalt condemn. We overcame already. That's the work finished on the cross. That's the work and that's the glory and that's the gain that we got when he arose again. That's the import of the shedding of his blood. Hallelujah. You overcame all the struggles already. What's the word of your testimony? Perhaps you need to realign what you're testifying or how that you're testifying because you overcame already. You overcame already. 
He paid the price already. He set you free already. He lifted you already. He healed you already. We overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Is someone excited this morning? You know, his blood gives us the access, access, access into the holy of holies, access into his presence. You know, we didn't need, we didn't need any special priest any longer as it were to go on our behalf because we were, we were, we, we, because we're sinners and because we're filthy and because we are smeared with filth and all of that. But by the power inherent in the death and his resurrection with the shedding of his blood, uh, we, we, we got access. We got boldness. We had power to get into his presence. Let's read Hebrews chapter 10 from verse 19. Therefore, brethren, what do we do now? I'd like that we all read together. Because this service is to encourage and to convince all of us of the finished work all the cross. Can we read together all of us? Having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Can you go on? By a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near. You're not reading. Can we read again? Let us do what? With? With? No, you're not, you're not convinced. You're not convinced. How should we come near? With a true heart? In full assurance of faith. Because without faith, it is impossible. It is impossible. It is impossible to please God. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. We have confidence by the blood of Jesus to enter into the place where he is. Hallelujah. You don't need Baba again. You don't need Baba. You don't need Baba any longer. So they come and tell you your village people are the ones responsible and they need to be appeased. Who are they? Jesus died and he rose. He died, he shed his blood and he rose again. And they say something is hovering around you. That's the reason you can't move ahead. That's the reason you can't progress. He died and he rose already. Praise the Lord. Let's read Galatians 5. Galatians 2.20. Galatians 2.20. And on that point, I'd like that we stand on our faith. I am crucified with Christ. I am crucified with Christ. I'd like that we make that proclamation. How were you crucified? All the sins, everything they could have imputed to you. It, it died along with him. It says, I am crucified with Christ. Nonetheless, I live. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. This is how you connect with the finished work on the cross. The life I now live in the flesh, how do I live it? It's myself here. The life I now live in the flesh, how do I live it? I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Put your hands together for yourself. He's passed. He passed. He went through all the unimaginable things. He was subjected to shame. He was beaten. He was wounded. He was bruised. The chastisement of our peace was laid on him with the stripes they, they struck him with. We, we got our healing. We died with him. 
will live now even in our body in faith because someone died and paid the price and so nothing absolutely nothing absolutely nothing can hold you down absolutely nothing can stand in your way i want you to open your mouth and begin to make proclamations right now proclamations of faith 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 i am crucified with christ nonetheless i am living yet it is not i who lives i live in the flesh today by the faith of the son of god the one who died and gave himself for me he was bruised he, he was wounded for my transgression he was bruised for my iniquity nothing nothing no condemnation any longer because the chastisement of my peace was laid on him sicknesses and infirmities cannot stand i don't know the report of doctors by the stripes of the lord you are healed i don't know the reports of doctors against your parents i don't know the reports of your doctors against you and they tell you this condition is holding you down but if you say today i know that when he died and he rose again he declared me healed he declared me free he declared me free you begin to assert and declare it nothing is holding me down because i am crucified with christ but today i live yea it is not i that live it is christ that lives in me and this life i am living in the flesh i am living by the faith of the son of god and so nothing is able to hold me down father we're in a praise for the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ uh, will render praise for the work have finished on the cross. Uh, today we praise your name. Uh, today we praise your name. Uh. I, I want to sing a song. I don't know if the millennials will know it. But you will learn if you don't know it because I know there are people here who will know it with me. I am serving a living God. His name is Jesus Christ. He died and rose and gave me victory. Yes, I have. Brother Prince. I am serving, I am serving a living God. His name is Jesus Christ. He died and rose and gave me victory i have victory i am serving i am serving a living god a living god In the name of Jesus is there anyone here who uh, has a mountainous like situation confronting them you have a challenge that appears to have defied every intervention applied I say this morning that the power of the Lord I'd like to see your hand if you're such a person here that the power of God is stupendous in this house this morning. I, I, I'd want you to, I'd want you to, I'd want you to, I'd want you to stretch your faith this morning. Is there a situation in your life? Is there a health condition this morning in your life? You know that has defied 
every applicable resolution. The power of God is in the house here today. At, after this moment, that situation is no more in the name of Jesus. After this moment today, uh, that mountain has gone plain in the name of Jesus. Uh, after this moment, that infirmity, that sickness, that disease that even doctors could not understand in all their wisdom and intellect, uh, they are gone in the mighty name of Jesus. Because we have overcome already. We have overcome by the fact of the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We have overcome in the name of Jesus. Should you also be here? And your heart is not backed with Christ already. You're not born again. You don't even understand. You haven't begun to live the life. It is your opportunity, you know, to come back unto God. The Bible says that he's standing at the doors of your heart and he knocks when you open, he comes in. The Bible says that he sups with you. The Bible says if any man comes into Christ, all things have gone. Do you want to, do you want to renounce your former way so that you can embrace the covenant that you have in Christ Jesus? Can we see anybody? You're not born again. You don't know Christ. You don't have any relationship with him. Yes, you come to hype every Sunday. But you know that there is nothing linking you personally with this God. I would like to pray with you so that you will enjoy this fullness that we have in Christ already.